Hey Truths, this is your sister Evangelist Donnie B, VKA Truth Seeker 5000, getting back on here for another season, review of Mary Mary Season 6, Episode 1. I can't promise you guys that I'll be doing the full season. This video is sponsored by the Truths, honestly, that uh, wanted me to do this, this first one here. I titled it, We Still Ain't Forgave Teddy. <laughs> we still mad at him. I thought we gave an old nasty kiss and made up and renewed marriage vows and all of that. What happened? We still mad at Teddy. Okay, I got it. Now, you guys, uh, for those of you who don't know me, though, I am the top reviewer for the Mary Mary show. I want to say that I do expose false Christians, especially in leadership and ministry. Uh, the Marys and their husbands are false tear Christian wolves. I call them tear wolves. Okay, all of them and everyone who looks like them in the celebrity and in ministry. But I digress uh, until later, that is. It's been six seasons of their ungodly foolishness and my spirit is exhausted. So I'm saying that to say I'm not promising a full season. I really, I can't do it. I dropped off at the last season, the last couple. I couldn't do it. <laughs> I was surprised I made it that far. It was only through the support of the truths. I kept it going, but I can't make any promises. Okay. Um, this video right here is actually sponsored by my truths. Uh, Tamika Merrick. Shamika White, Elanitra Thigpen, Angelique Corey, Marcus Williams, Lady Rose, Tarani Apple White, and Gina Thomas. Ciao, they got me on here doing this, on this camera, reviewing this foolery. You guys can thank them because honestly, I was not. I was done. I wasn't here for it anymore i said honey i'm done with this circus i got off of the ride last season i said no sir no ma'am not my monkeys not my circus but for my truths i live and i try like to hear it here it go so the show opens up and we can see warren looking like an older black Bart Simpson and Tina, sad show Bob, who's also from The Simpsons with that red hair sitting on top of her head. We find out that the Marys, they still have not fulfilled their contractual obligation to Sony to, in making another Mary Mary album together. Now, pause. What happened to Corinne, the girl that uh, Google saw singing with Erica that Mitch brought in last season. They left off with the Marys very mad at each other. You know, when Tina opened up that door on Erica as she was trying to explain, uh, they were upset and they never addressed that. Not in this first episode anyway. Unpause. I was just wondering. Not really. <laughs> but if you're gonna put it out there, you know, a new episode, new video, include you know, finish off what you had last season. What happened? I guess we don't care. Moving on. Now, <laughs> this actually, um, Warren chasing her, Mary, Mary, uh, Tina down to make this album is one of the repeated foundation topics of the show. Uh, the second repetitive topic is Teddy's cheating on Tina. And Tina giving fake forgiveness. Okay, you're going to be like me. Y'all going to be like, if y'all mention Teddy cheating one more time. <laughs> okay, I'm like, Rodia, well, she cocked the gun. Just say it one more time. This <laughs> is somebody getting shot. It, it's just annoying. It's boring. We're kind of over it. But anyway. Um... It's been over two years. Um, she's been dragging this man cross country and state with her. Uh, she's been on this He Cheated on Me lifetime movie drama story reenactment tour on stages all across America. Uh, Tina claims that she forgave Teddy for cheating. 
Um, but the lie detector determined that was a lie. Uh, because she feels like she can't go anywhere. Uh, she made a new song uh, and she wants to take it on the road and go on tour. Sang the song, but she want to carry Teddy on her hip like a little fanny pack, you know. I mean, we all know he cheated <laughs> and he allegedly got another woman pregnant. Uh, but so did Pastor Warren. Yep, Erica's husband. You know, the same thing with Erica happened. Uh, he had a whole other life and a whole other apartment in New York and everything. And he had a woman and he got her pregnant. Yes, that's y'all's pastor. Who Whose pastor is this? Who's a member of their uh, church out in the California called the California Worship Center? Child, he out there preaching a sermon the other week about being fruitful. Y'all know I had a word for him on his channel and I spoke it too. But anyway, um, more on that later. Uh, my original point was that the Marys decided to stay with those adulterous men. You know, so why keep bringing it up? You know, what they did wrong. Tina, that's Tina doing that. Erica said, I didn't been through that. She told us uh, last season, she said, I've been through that with Warren. And he said it himself, uh, what he did. I put the link where he said that in the description box. But anyway, uh, Tina, she made a song called too hard not to forgive but clearly she really want to say it's too hard to forgive your lying cheating behind that's actually the lyrics of the song of what she really want to say she want to go from mary mary to mary j blige in her songs that's where she she want to go that's why she's not feeling doing another mary mary praise singing album you know, Tina want that secular crossover pain money. You know, there's actually more, more money, as you guys know, in poking at people's pain than it is in encouraging and uplifting people because there are more unhappy, sad, miserable, angry, and depressed people in the world than there are happy and encouraged people. And that's what they want to hear. They want acknowledgement of that and like, yeah, it's okay to be miserable and unhappy and he did me this way and that way and I hate him, I hate her, you know, type of songs to kind of sit back in their misery and be comfortable in that in that depression and misery. Um, <laughs> that's how pharmaceuticals and, and companies make their money. You know, they don't really try to cure anybody. They just keep treating people. Hello, Verizon, Verizon Wireless. Do you hear me now? <laughs> okay, that's how they get their money. Not really curing anybody. So that's what Tina want to do. And people like her and Mary want to do with these songs, these sad sack songs. You know, she want that Mary J money, audience money. Y'all know Mary J Blige is famous. And she done made millions uh, from poking your pain songs. Uh, she'll throw out an occasional upbeat party song here and there. But folks love those sad sack songs that she make, you know. And that's what Tina want to do. She want to be the, the gospel Mary J. But, but see, this is why I don't idolize people. I don't, you know, put people on a pedestal. Because... God and his people are not in the business of treating pain. God cures it, you know, whether it is mental, physical, especially spiritual pain, okay? He doesn't play those psychological games that people play. If you're serving the Lord and his people with encouraging, happy songs, then do that. But don't try to back mass songs and try to play on people's emotions. Ain't nobody got time for that. But let me move on. Uh, she want to tell Teddy uh, and and that she want him to come along. She want to pack him <laughs> in her back pocket. And he's just not here for it. And he tells her. They cut to them actually taping a piece of their uh, 10 Minutes with Tina and Teddy uh, web series that they got going on. And Tina 
she want to go into and, and take the whole 10 minutes <laughs> and and tell them how she uh forgave teddy how he cheated on her but teddy said hold up your definition of forgiveness is a little bit off honey because you tore up my cars she tore up three of them and she came stabbing after him he said uh with a knife trying to kill him she plotted on even killing his mother she said that herself last season and in an interview you know this she said in the previous episodes and articles as well so y'all know what she remind me of like a crazy fake christian gospel version of kiki wyatt don't tell me y'all don't see it they both will go from zero to 100 <laughs> in two seconds um anyway next Erica and Pastor Warren goes to a Sony meeting to get them uh, to hear her new solo album. They liked it. Um, I didn't hear enough of it to determine whether or not I liked it or not. But uh, here she's talking about not wanting to release her album at the same time as another big artist. Let's say Tasha Cobbs or Yolanda Adams. But... I felt there was a little bit of a setup there going on of, of her making that point. So anyway, uh, later in the next scene, Pastor Warren blindfolds Erica and Tina and he drove them out to an old studio that they used to record in, in the back of his parents' house. He was actually hoping to break those uh, Mary Mary first love bring those feelings back to Tina so that she would be inspired and get to working on this Mary Mary album because he owes Sony a ton of money he said seven figures last season and uh Tina she's like with the song that he started playing at first I believe it's called uh farewell they were kind of off um I think that was Warren throwing them off, or I thought so, until I saw a future episode of them performing that song in Israel on stage, and it seemed off to me. Uh, did it seem off to you guys, or was it just my ears? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, Tina ends up getting into an argument with Warren, saying that uh, she doesn't want to sing the part about worrying because she feels that's not her truth anymore. She says, you know, she doesn't worry anymore. That the devil is a liar. You know, that's what I say. The devil is a liar. <laughs> she don't worry no more. She was just in the previous episode trying to pack Teddy in her pocket pouch. Okay, like he a pocket poodle or something. And drag him on tour with her. So, no worries? You don't have no worries? Where? I I see worries, and so does everyone else. So just just stop, <laughs> stop with the charade. Next, uh, the Marys they go on this random camping trip. Okay, so that uh, Erica could, could get Tina into a conversation and into convincing her about doing the Mary Mary album. That's what. Um, her husband asked her to do and so they go on this camping trip and i'm like i don't know who came up with this i'm sure the producers because black folks we not going camping <laughs> you're talking about swat uh swatting at uh mosquitoes tina out there swatting the mosquitoes with bats and whatnot and uh she crashed in the tent and everything camping <laughs> they really could have left this part this scene on the cutting room floor maybe went to a spa or something you know what i mean but um before that i wanted to point something out before that scene when they reached the camping grounds uh while they they were in their car on their way uh acting silly singing this song called uh she'll be coming around the mountains when she comes y'all remember when we were kids uh we would sing that in school or somewhere you you've heard that before 
when you were younger. Now, if you were watching Tina's hand, uh, her left hand go to her head while they were singing that song, she tried to throw up the satanic horns. Now, you can see it if you rewatch it. I would have posted the pictures or some of the video, but you guys know that are my day ones. Y'all know what happened to me a couple years ago with Tyler Perry. So we're not doing that anymore. But um, it's clear, very clear. You can see it. You know, she puts her hand up, throws up the 666 sign to her head, to her temple. Uh, she loves doing that sign. It looks like the okay, um, actually the horn sign is what she did. Um, you can see the two horn, her fingers make the horns. And on her album, actually, she made the 666 sign, okay sign. You can see it uh, on her album cover the next time you check it out. I mean, she's doing that because she actually has to. She does it the most between the both. You know, they sold their souls to the devil for fame. And that's one of the trademark hand signs that they who are in league with the Baphomet group uh, and sold their souls for fame. They have to throw up those allegiance hand signs as a show of obedience to the Baphomet God, which is Satan. Now, regardless of what so-called Christian talk you hear out of their mouths, beloveds, <laughs> or whatever dance or praising of the Holy Ghost that they do, it's all deception. They serve Satan. Now, Pastor Warren, who has a church, yes, let's you you already know we we getting ready to go in. Um, he owns my block, this company that produces music, not only for gospel but R and B and hip hop artists too. He has helped produce music for people like Sierra, Kanye West, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, Nas, and it goes on. Again, whose pastor is this? I mean, he and Erica's church name is California Worship Center out there in Las Vegas, California. There's absolutely no godliness in this man, in these people at all. I mean, whatever you see, that appears godly, such as him on stage preaching, singing, praising, worshiping, dancing, because that's all he do when he preaching. He he go duck walking across the stage, uh, really floor, okay, looking like Chuck Berry. I don't care what they say or what they look like they doing, that so-called godly is fake. His heart is not with God. It's with his father, the devil. The, whole, the Holy Spirit actually spoke to me concerning them the other day. I was uh, talking to some truths on my Facebook page. And the Holy Spirit said that the Bible says in Matthew 7, 16 through 20, Ye shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every tree that bringeth good fruit but every corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bring forth good fruit, not good fruit actually, will be thrown down and cast into the lake of fire. Okay, so we have to understand that you cannot be both. You cannot be good and bad. You're a bad person, a bad uh, Christian and produce good fruit. Only the wicked produce wicked fruit. And they are wicked. You want to know something crazy? I found out two, that two Sundays ago, Pastor Warren just did a sermon on being fruitful. He going to say you can't serve the flesh and be filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time. 
Okay. I challenged him. I asked, so when are you going to stop producing music for the ungodly? Okay. I'll actually put his sermon on that in the link down below. You know, I only could actually watch 23 minutes of it. I couldn't stomach any more of his hypocrisy. You know, these people who are who Jesus was talking about in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, those who pretended to be with him and represent him, but they were not. Also, when he spoke about the tares and the wheat, remember that story? The tares were the fake wheat. They actually look like wheat, but they're weeds. They were asking in the Bible concerning the tares. So, you know, what should we do with them? Shall we pluck them up right now? Jesus said no, because you may pluck up some of the wheat with them, some of the good people. But wait and let them grow up together alongside each other. And then pluck them out. Bundle them up and throw them into the fire. This is where these people are going, beloved. Do not believe and do not follow them. And don't forget I said it before. The Bible says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God can bless a person with an angelic voice or great songwriting talents but they are not of his. You know many people who are not of God that are smart, talented, but they're not of God. They're going to hell. Look at Pastor Warren. He's using his gift to produce for the wicked songs used to make God's people stumble and fall away from him, you guys, and fall further and further into sin. You got Tasha Cobb now, just did a song with Nicki Minaj. And Bishop Marvin Sapp doing a song with R. Ke doing a song with R. Kelly, who is the black Hugh Hefner. Okay, he got his own sex cult, allegedly. I didn't even know Marvin Sapp was a bishop. Did y'all know? When when did this bishopdom come in with Martin Sapp? I had no clue. He's he calling himself bishop now. That's even worse. He gonna say that that he prayed about it and the message is bigger than the messenger. When asked what 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 made you Put R. Kelly on this thing. He gonna say the mess message is bigger than the messenger. When the Bible says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Marvin Sapp said in his lyrics, listen to the spirit. Now, one, did you listen to the spirit? Did, did the spirit tell you? To have R. Kelly sneezing all over and throughout the, your gospel song that you handing over to the saints. That what spirit are you talking about, too? Because no Christian addresses the Holy Spirit as the Spirit. We say Holy Spirit. We say Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. That's who he is. You just gonna say the spirit, little s. We all know as Christians, the Holy Spirit would never, ever tell you to minister to the hearts and the spirits of God's people with a heathen like some R. Kelly. Jesus had a fit when they had Jezebel up in the pulpit misleading his people. And you gonna bring in and recruit Jezebel? On the song that you're going to give to us to taint our spirits and open up demonic doors? No, sir. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke that evil spirit that told you to do that in Jesus' name right now. I know it was the Baphomet spirit because that's who he serves. He going to say in an interview when he was asked why did he allow R. Kelly 
on the song when the sex cult allegations were happening. He gonna say he made the song before those allegations came out against R. Kelly. And repeat it again. You shouldn't focus on the messenger, but on the message, which is for us to listen to the spirit once again. Um, Black folks, especially, don't even eat everybody's food. And you expect us to listen to a message sent out by one of Satan's chief messengers on God's behalf? That's like a pedophile running around on, uh, running a daycare center. And he get on a commercial talking about, bring your kids on down to daddy daycare. We gonna treat them right. So we're expected to ignore the fact of the truth that we know this is a pedophile and still drop our kids off into his hands. That's not the kind of parents that we are. And it's definitely not the kind of parents that, that Father God Almighty is. He would never leave our hearts and our souls and our minds in the leadership of no R. Kelly figures. While we talking about parents right now, parents right now are trying to get their kids back from R. Kelly out of his grips. Those women over there, young women, I might add, their parents are looking for them. It's been said that they are trapped over there. And if they're not physically trapped, they're mentally, mentally trapped, enslaved by this man. And you, you want us to trust you and listen to a song with him all over, all up in there, creeping in like a creeper. Bishop, you know what? Bishop Mar Marvin Sapp is the type of terror to bring a pedophile to your picnic. Have him eating your potato salad and peeking at your children. Honey, not on my watch. Not not on my watch. I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> I won't do this. I don't know why the church isn't as outraged as they should be. Actually, I do know. Because it's been a conditioning over the years of gospel artists uh, trying to incorporate into the church um, worldly music, ungodly music uh, from other artists. Uh, Y'all know Dietrich Hatton, he tried to remake Usher songs and, you know, uh, dirty songs and make them gospel. That's what they do. And it's become to where the church has been comfortable with that going on. And uh, it's, it's not right. That's not what it should be. Now here we go in 2017 and we got a bishop bringing in an ungodly man to sing to God's people. It's not right. You, sir, you're next. <laughs> bishop, so-called bishop. But let me close this thing out because they making my spirit itch, okay? So at the end of this show, we find out that the Marys were invited to go sing over in Israel, okay? And they invited their whole family to have that experience. And they were all, of course, excited. I actually saw in a future clip that it looked like Tina was being baptized out, baptized out there. If I do another video, <laughs> but anyway, um, lastly, uh, they tell us we find out that Tina and Erica's solo albums are coming out at the same time. Google, she didn't turn it into a Mary versus Mary competition, but honestly, <laughs> it's not a competition. We know Tina will win because she didn't built her solo career off of Teddy's cheating. So people all want to hear uh, what type of pain songs, you know, she bringing it on her album. 
Uh, and truth be told, they both winning because Pastor Warren is, you know, Erica's husband and he's producing Tina's album. So he's getting potential royalties. Do you think if it was a real competition that he would uh, produce for Tina and hurt his wife and her career? No. It's like that, uh, like that commercial, that Twix commercial, the left versus right. It doesn't matter because both sides are getting paid. It's a, it's just a game. Listen, beloveds. <sighs> Be not deceived, okay? We're living in the end time right now. There's so much going on. We need to be paying attention to this foolery. That's why it's ending. God is ending it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and rightly so. It's too much going on right now. We need to be paying attention to the signs of the prophecies of the world, of the word of God is coming to pass. And I just want you guys to be focused. I want you to be focused. I want you to be saved. I want to see you at the Feast of the Lamb when the Lord comes back for his people and we're all together with him forever, as the Bible says. If we live right, if we trust him, if we get to know him, pray, let him be Lord of your life. If you're not saved, get saved. Ask him to come into your heart and read your word and believe in him. Let him show you he is the one that can help you, save you, deliver you, the only one, nothing else. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday, yesteryear, earlier today. What matters is right now. You can start a new beginning. If you need to repent, repent and stop doing it. It's okay. That's what the Holy Ghost is for, to help us when we get down and when we stumble. It happens. It's all right. Just repent, turn away from it, beloved, and come back to your true love in Christ Jesus. I love you guys, and uh, I will be talking with you soon. Don't know if I'll do another one of these. <laughs> My spirit, <laughs> y'all don't know, but definitely uh, connect with me. Thumbs up this video. Let me know uh, you're here for it, and pray for me. And, and I'll be praying for you. Your sister, Evangelist, Evangelist Donnie B. Anderson, out.